Hello, everyone. We're going to talk about one word today. Satisfied. It jumped out at me in the readings, and I'm like, that's it. Got to talk about satisfied. Being satisfied. Because one of the traits of people who are truly living in the world or are actually worshiping Satan are never satisfied. They want more and more and more. I remember a ways back in my early journey when I was thinking, well, how can those evil people need more money? How can these people who already have seven houses across the world, how could they need more money? It's because they're never satisfied. And it's kind of like the progress, which I don't even want to call progress. I'll call it the, you know, the going down into the pits of hell when you watch porn. Because you start with normal things, you know, that like you would do with your spouse. And then you're more curious. You're like, well, what else is there out there? And what about this? And what about that? And the cr there's crazy stuff on those porn sites. You're never satisfied. If you are um, a womanizer or a chick who just sleeps around with all these guys, you can never get enough if that is truly what you're addicted to. You know, they call some people sex addicts. But we're going to talk about satisfied in the normal way <laughs> because I don't think any one of us are down that evil path. And if we are, we ought to listen with big ears. Okay. Are you satisfied? I remember back in my day before God pulled me out of the pits of hell, I wanted more, more, more. So we had a house, but our friend of ours got a boat. We got a boat. We got a lake house and we had people over all the time. And I just spent money like it was water. I don't know if you spend water, but you know what I mean. It was just flowing out. Gosh, looking at my life now, boy, I wish I saved some of that money. But we were just in this state of, well, we have money, let's spend it. And then I just wanted more money. I wanted a higher paying job. It became, a, I was unsatisfied. Let's just say that. We, we were looking for another home. And then when God pulled me out of the pits of hell, what did I feel? After a couple of years, I wanted to minimize. And then I started being grateful for the fact that we even had two homes when some people don't even have one. And then we decided we don't need that other lake house, so we sold that, we sold the boats, we show, so, sold the wave runners. And I know how different I feel now. <laughs> I mean, even when I'm sitting here spending money like crazy, trying to get this place finished, trying to get some grass in my backyard. Yes, I have like six feet of it, but oh my goodness, now I have piles and piles of topsoil sitting in the back because I am going to finish the yard up until where the um, retreat houses are. And that's a lot of money. <laughs> it is. It's a pretty big yard. And then I'm going to get some lighting around the pool and all that kind of stuff. But the real deal is this. When God touched my heart, the overwhelming need for more became an overwhelming understanding of my blessings. So if you are out there thinking that you need more or you're not satisfied with your life, that's very worldly. Maybe you don't have a lot of money. Maybe your relationship with your spouse is a little rocky. Maybe your kids are having problems. But if you've got a house over your head, whether it's yours or you're renting, and you've got a car and maybe you have a job and all of these things, it's time to be grateful. We have to shift that satisfied, unsatisfied mindset to being grateful and thanking God for all of your blessings. And if you're so grateful and if you already thank God, then praise God for giving you that heart. 
gosh, I can't even tell you how different I am from who I was before God pulled me out of the pits of hell again. I'm so different. I'm so grateful. So grateful. And I just want to thank God for everything. And I am satisfied. I mean, yeah, I'm getting a lawn. I'm getting a backyard, but that's finishing this house. And I'm kind of scared, believe it or not, for the number that's going to come back from the guy who's doing the uh, retreat homes. He is, by the way, going to do a barn dough with metal siding and metal roof, which is cool. I kind of wanted it all to be the same. But anyway, I'm waiting for that number. And I'm just praying that it's not out of the world. You know, not over what I told him I had for the other house. Okay. All that being said, be satisfied. Are you like the Rolling Stones? I can't get no satisfaction. Then that's not good. Even if you have just a little, be grateful for what you have. Okay. A couple things. I am going to... Oh, by the way, I got to tell you about yesterday. So yesterday was so fun. We drove all over Kentucky and we went to some of these Mennonite stores and what's the other? Oh my gosh, I can't believe you guys are screaming at me. The other, they don't use electricity. They don't use cars. Oh, okay. That's going to come to me. But there's two different kinds of those people, the Mennonites and the... Oh my gosh. I know you're screaming it into the phone. I can't remember, but I will remember when I'm done, probably when I'm done with this or maybe at the end. Okay. So I guess they're good bakers and they have really interesting stores. They don't really have like the same stuff that you would buy at a normal American grocery store. And so we bought this bakery. I bought a ton of stuff from the bakery and I didn't even like it that much. I mean, I had like a mini loaf of banana bread and it had way too much cinnamon in it cinnamon in it <laughs> and then i had another thing of hummingbird or mockingbird cake i don't even know what the heck it is i'm bringing it today where what is it yeah hummingbird cake i don't know if you know what that is but it's got like pineapple in it and nuts and not a fan and then we bought all this candy four candy bars for one dollar and they are so old i mean I took a bite into the Butterfinger and I was like, oh my gosh, spit it out. I mean, it was nasty. The Hershey's bar, you couldn't even break it. It was like bending. That's how old this stuff was. But anyway, it was a great time with Doug and his sister, Rachel. Hope to do that again. And now today I got to go to a little, not a little, hopefully a big fundraiser. This is how awesome that family is that I know, the Cesarios. The young girl who met me, Chrissy, she heard about a woman who had a baby that has never left the hospital. And they live in Kentucky, and the hospital is in Nashville, and they're, you know, both have jobs, and they're trying to balance everything. So Chrissy thought, let's do a big fundraiser at this Country View shopping place. It's like a grocery store. And bring yard stuff. You know, like things that you can sell at a yard sale so you can get some good money for it. I don't have anything to sell, but I asked Doug and Rachel and they're like, we have some stuff. So at least I'm bringing something and then I'll, you know, give them a little donation of my own. But that's going to be so fun. It's beautiful out this morning. It's actually kind of chilly, like 65 degrees, but it might just heat up today. I don't know. And then tomorrow I am going to dinner back at their house and I'm going to learn how to shoot my gun. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Okay, just to catch up on me, and I have to go to, the, to Mass tonight because it is the first Saturday. I totally forgot about it. Totally forgot about it. But I'm going to Mass tonight, and I'll probably get in early for confession and then take it from there. All righty, everyone. Let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, please remind us that we should be happy with what we have and grateful for the blessings that you have given us. 
Help us to turn away from the world who tells us we need more and more and more. Help us to look at our family and love them just the way they are. And most importantly, help us to turn away from being greedy, wanting more in our life, wanting something that might not even be possible for ourselves. Maybe these desires to be more fit, lose weight, more healthy. Help us to do it one step by step with you. Sorry, Lord, I'm kind of all over the map here when I'm praying to you, but mostly we just want satisfaction in our bones, in our blood, in our mind, so that we can be grateful and live life like that, not waiting for the next thing or not being happy and grateful until we lose weight or we get this job or we do this or we do that. Help us to love ourselves, love our lives, love you, and bring you in it more and more every day. And now we will pray for all of the souls in purgatory by name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Mother Mary, please help us to be satisfied like you and to see our blessings all over our lives today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sorry, that, that prayer was like a little all over the map. That was probably one of the worst ones I've ever had. But I think it's because I'm looking at the time, and I've got to get going to pick up that stuff and get over to that fundraiser. So everyone, be satisfied. You'll know if you aren't satisfied right now, you will know when you start to look at your house Look at your life, you know, and you start to minimize it. You want to be more simplistic. That is where things shifted for me. And my husband, oddly enough, was right there with me. It wasn't like I was saying, we got to sell this. We got to do that. And then he was like, no, we don't. He was like, yeah, you're right. We don't need all this stuff. So ask God for his satisfaction in your heart. Got it. Those people were Amish. What did I tell you? I would figure it out at the end. <laughs> so Mennonites and Amish people are kind of all around down here. And we were seeing people that were like, you know, had a buggy and the horse was riding them pretty fast down the highway. It's pretty crazy. They were on the side. They weren't exactly in the road. But anyway, I guess they're supposed to be make from scratch people and all that kind of stuff. But I have to say, not much of a fan. Anyway, all right. you know why? Probably because I'm used to like the processed, you know, stuff, like not made from the hands, you know, they're probably made from a machine and that's why I like that because it's probably more sugary. I don't know. But I will say that I ate a lot yesterday, a whole lot, and stuff that was not keto. I woke up this morning, had another pound, which was good, but I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even feel like I ate that much junk which is cool. Trying to put on a little weight, but that's not the way to do it. Put on the weight eating good stuff, not junk. Okay. I love you all. Sorry, this is so all over the place. Find something more with God. Soul, mind, and body. Be satisfied with your life and have a blessed and inspired day. Oh no. Okay. I'm still here. Okay. Bye. Talk to you soon.